Hi everyone and thanks for coming along to my talk on my PhD research on two species of side neck terrapin here in KZN under the supervision of Professor Colleen Downs. So the PhD focus on two species, Pelmedusa guliata and Pelio sinuatus, or the marsh terrapin and the serrated hinge terrapin respectively. P. guliata is least concern on the IUCN red list, uh, P. sinuatus is not listed whereas both species are considered least concern on the regional atlas and red list made in 2014. There is major knowledge gaps for both species throughout their whole range. Um, we're going to focus specifically on both species in KZN. It's been long suggested that Southern African terrapins be a target for telemetry research. Stuart Meakin suggested on the marsh terrapin all the way back in 1983 which is 33 years ago when this research began, or 37 years ago today. So in the 33-year period between Stuart Meekin's suggestion that terrapins be a target for telemetry work and the beginning of our work, there has been um, huge strides taken in the technology of telemetry tags, particularly in terrestrial environments, but also in semi-aquatic and aquatic systems as well. On this slide, we have in the top left the range of the serrated hinge terrapin, and the bottom right the range of the marsh terrapin. And the photos show a serrated hinge terrapin in the top right being released with a live active tag. And in the bottom left is a marsh terrapin with a dummy tag put on it as a test model at the animal house uh, here in UKZN. So I suppose one of the main reasons we wanted to focus on terrapins in this research is, was to recognize how threatened they were, uh, how endangered they were. Uh, I now know there's a, amongst the general public, there's, a, there's, there's already recognition that amphibians are very threatened vertebrates, uh, incorrectly thought of as the most threatened group of vertebrates. But now, more recently, we found that uh, Terrapins, tortoises, and marine turtles, the three as testudines, are the most threatened vertebrate group for, with, with extinction. Of the 360 known species, 187 are threatened, and of that 187, 127 are endangered or critically endangered. So, main things that are threatening them globally are also what's threatening them in South Africa loss of habitat, uh, particularly in northern KZN for land use change for agriculture. Decline in habitat quality from pollution from said agriculture as well as industrial runoff. Fragmentation, that's particularly with roads. Um, they're not very successful at crossing roads. They are a, a large percentage of roadkill diversity and abundance. Climate change, of course. Um, uh, prolonged droughts, uh, reduction in rainfall, uh, increasing temperatures, and their, their, their sex is actually dependent, same as crocodiles in, in the nest, their sex is temperature dependent as well. So climate change will clearly create further detrimental effects to the sex ratios. Some photos very briefly illustrating the threats. On the previous slide I had a photo of a Nile crocodile, so natural predation is also something that threatens them. But uh, in the top left is a Niamiti pan, which was a, a large pan at one of the main field sites in Dumo Game Reserve. This photo was taken in March 2016, uh, during the worst drought the reserve had experienced in over 50 years. In the top right is industrial effluent runoff, a photo taken by myself, the author, just north of Durban. And the bottom left is an electrified fence for Ndumo Game Reserve. Um, and in the bottom right is an extension of what is actually a crocodile farm, but um, again, a heavy industrial agriculture and land use change uh, on this slide shown here. Just that same photo again, a, a Niamiti pan taken in March 2016. And sadly, how we found the majority of our terrapins in 2016, because of the drought, found them as terrapin biltong, really, um, due, to the, to, due to the drought and um, not being able to find water quick enough. And this is more of what we'd like to see. So this is Niamiti Pan 2018, same month, so March 2018. Um, the reserve finally recovered from its drought. So as you can see, it's a very uh, dynamic and resilient habitat. Um, so it was great to see it this way in 2018. 
Uh, sadly, for my research purposes, it was a little, little on the late side, but it was still very good to see it recover so well, so nicely. So a bit more detail on the methods now. As previously stated, this was the first time terrapins in southern Africa had transmitters attached to them. The transmitters were modified fish tags. They recorded three pieces of information, which was signal strength, activity, temperature. They spoke to relay stations, which spoke to a base station, and the base station then eventually spoke to the laptop. Uh, the it was also a two-way communication because it was ultra-high uh, frequency UHF so that the station, as long as the tag was in range, could also change the settings on the tag. We'll find out why this is important later. Um, terrapins are long-lived animals um, and so do tell a story of their habitat. Um, so everything we could collect in the field we did in terms of morphology, a tissue sample for genetics. The morphology included obviously gender, uh, total weight, length, and width of the carapace. And with the serrated hinge terrapin, we collected a secretion from its ratkins or musk gland where possible. At all sites, untagged individuals were uniquely marked. So on the event of recapture, we had the data from the previous capture of location, weight, and length as well. And on this map here, you'll see uh, Niamiti Pan at Ndumo Game Reserve, which was the telemetry focus site for the serrated hinge terrapin. Uh, you'll just kind of see how it's uh, roughly set up. So the pinkish red triangle is indicating a relay station, and the blue triangle further away from the pan um, indicating the base station. Uh, these stations all spoke to one another, and they also spoke to the tags, green dots being individual animals. Not all these animals had uh, tags attached but um, 10 did. So for some results from the telemetry now, uh, in the top graph, you'll see the frequency of inactivity in a 24 hour period uh, for the marsh terrapin, uh, Pelmedusa giliata, or for the serrated hinge terrapin, Pilio sinuatus, respectively. Um, you'll see Pilio sinuatus, um, the inactivity bars do there's a little spike in the middle which would possibly indicate basking but um, it's generally a bimodial distribution of inactivity most inactivity recordings were at night in your bottom graph the bottom left graph we have diurnal behavior shown for again the marsh terrapin and the serrated hinge terrapin respectively the box plots uh, depicting activity over a 24-hour period again uh, again showing most activity uh, in a diurnal fashion. There was 105 days worth of telemetry data ret uh, retrieved at Indumo Game Reserve and 336 days of data retrieved at Tala Private Game Reserve for the Marsh Terrapin. The, uh, as I said, the, you could change the settings of the tags, which was important because a couple of times animals went out of range, so we told our stations to speak to the tags that they call in once every 10 to 20 seconds, so that's when we manually went out to try and track. Sadly, we didn't uh, retrieve lost animals that went out of range, um, and then we could also return the settings back to once an hour or once every two hours. So during the telemetry project at both sites, we also retrieved weather data from the nearest available weather stations. And in particular, we wanted to compare the general ambient temperature to the tag temperature um, or the microhabitat temperature of animals. And we also found that the most significant habitat, um, environmental variable to affect uh, terrapin activity was ambient temperature. Uh, rainfall also had a significant effect for boat species and there was no significant effect for wind. Our final telemetry result graph now showing both the tag temperature, average tag temperature and average ambient temperature at boat field sites for boat species. Um, what is most interesting about this graph, if you see, is the Tala ambient temperature, how low it is compared to the tag, the average tag temperature at Tala for the marsh terrapin, Hermedusa ciliata, showing a five degree difference um, in the mornings, in the early mornings. And showing somehow that the marsh terrapin was able to maintain a five degree higher temperature on average than the ambient. 
finally, very quickly, I'd like to just fly through some of the demographic results, as I know I'm very tight for time. Um, but maybe in the Q&A session, I'd be more than happy to answer questions. So in total, from February 2016 to October 2019, we got 97 serrated hinge terrapins and 51 marsh terrapins at 10 sites throughout the province. The main concern and main worry is the size class bias towards old, mature individuals. We were getting very few juveniles, very few sub-adults. 11 of the 97 serrated hinge terrapins respectively and 4 of the 51 marsh terrapins were juvenile or sub-adult. Uh, we believe this will be nest failure, uh, predation, climate change, the recent drought, uh, land use change, a variety of different factors. Uh, in the photos here we have one of only two examples of a marsh terrapin we actually found nesting. Uh, this point was returned to regularly, but no juveniles or hatching was recorded. And the bottom right, uh, this photo here, is a, actually a crocodile tooth stuck in the carapace of a threaded hinge terrapin. And the final graph of today's talk showing the relationship between length and body mass uh, between, uh, for both uh, threaded hinge terrapin and marsh terrapin throughout the province. These are the people I would just like to thank, in no particular order. Uh, I know I'm very tight for time now, so if you could maybe potentially just read their names for yourself, but uh, I couldn't do it without them. They were all fantastic. And questions, yes, and my email address here on the bottom slide, um, as if anyone would like to collaborate in the future with Terrapin work, I'd be more than happy to hear from you. Thank you very much.